the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh Jesus I sing for all that you done for me Who brings our chaos back into order and makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun all of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your love. I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. Bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Welcome to another Balmoral online feature. Thank you for your interest and the effort that you make to share in these times with us. And we trust that this will be uh, an encouragement and a help to you. Uh, join me as we pray. I want to begin my prayer first off with an ancient prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Holy Father, these days we're tempted to believe our survival depends on us, on procuring enough vaccine, getting it into the arms of everyone. Forgive us for forgetting that you are God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
that it is in you that we live and move and have our being. As valuable as vaccines may be, your mercy and the life you offer us is what we most need. We ask that you would help our country and the nations of the world as we muddle through these times. May these be days of heightened awareness of you, increased worship and obedience, greater caring for others. Be with those among us who are struggling and suffering with various conditions. May they know your comforting presence and your sustaining power. Help us to find our balance, turning to you always, and also turning to each other for support. Open our eyes and hearts to the needs of people. Thank you for your faithfulness, for supplying our needs, and thank you for the faithfulness of your people who support our chapel work. And now would you use our time together today as we worship, learn, and fellowship. Amen. Well, this week I've been impressed with being impressed. Uh, did you get that? I've been impressed with being impressed. When have you been impressed? When is it that impressed you? Maybe a well-conditioned athlete, a carefully scripted presentation, perhaps a well-ordered garden, a handsome man, a beautiful woman, or just an adorable baby in church. These things have a way of drawing one's eye and holding our attention. Do you know what I mean? When we first moved to Red Deer, we met a man here at the chapel by the name of Howard. He was a retired dairy farmer who excelled in a number of areas. His orchids were award-winning. The landscaping on his property made you look twice. But his special talent was wood carving in the round. Using exotic woods, Howard would carve lifelike scenes that usually included animals. One of my favorites was of two bull moose, their horns interlocked in mortal combat. The detail of his carvings was legendary. You could see the shoulder muscles of these animals tensed as they fought for supremacy. If you were ever fortunate enough to attend a viewing of Howard's carvings, you'll remember people ooing and awing as they made their way from piece to piece. Isn't that the effect excellence has on us? It makes us gush. It puts us in a state of awe. And words like, wow, come out of our mouths. It's quite something, this being impressed. Well, in the short New Testament book of Jude, Christians were being served notice that not all was well. Their Christian faith, especially the good news of Jesus Christ, was under attack. What it claimed for Jesus and what it required of Jesus' followers was disputed. Immorality was being tolerated, final accountability denied, and people were being devilishly deceived. And to counter this misinformation, Jude presented a vision of God, or should we say a version of God, that outshone anything the false teachers were marketing. And he packages it in what we commonly refer to as a doxology, a short burst of praise. But don't let its brevity mislead you. It's actually loaded with truth. Our meditation today is entitled, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And it's based on Jude 24 and 25. Jude is a stern little book. It contains several, it, it contains severe warnings about failing to take God seriously. We learn that God doesn't take kindly to those who challenge his authority and refuse to live life on his terms. I just recently saw a bumper sticker in Red Deer, I think it was last week, and it declared, don't tell me how to live. 
which is precisely the attitude that gets us into hot water with God. Well, God is more than a punishing judge. He is not less. The doxology in verses 24 and 25 is a 48-word long sentence, and the central idea is a declaration. Praise belongs to God. I think of the traditional doxology that many of us have grown up with. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or Spirit. He makes his case for the praiseworthiness of God with a series of considerations. Consider this about God, he says, and then consider that about God. There are five considerations in all. Consideration one. Consider what he can do for you, verse 24. God's praiseworthiness is first linked with his role as protector of his people. He rescues us from trouble. Surely this is the foremost duty of a king to his subjects. He protects them. And because he preserves them from stumbling, they're able to stay on their feet. They enjoy a kind of sure-footedness. Praise God. Psalm 23 is perhaps the most famous psalm celebrating the Lord's role in providing and protecting his own. How often has God stood with you in a moment of need? You didn't know what to do or what to say. Or how often has he stood with you in a moment of temptation and preserved you from moral failure? Likely more often than we give him credit for. The thought of protection in the here and now segues into future preservation. He can be counted on to preserve us from a massive collapse of faith from which we might never recover. Recently was listening to a talk by John Piper, the famous Christian preacher, and he raised a question, or he told his, his uh, audience about a question that he sometimes raises with himself. As he's going to bed at night, he wonders, will I be a Christian tomorrow? Wakes up in the morning, and of course he is. And then the next evening, he wonders again, will I be a Christian in the morning? Wakes up in the morning, and of course he is, and over a period of weeks and months and a lifetime, this continues. Why is that? Why is it that we wake up in the morning and we are still believers in Jesus Christ and we have faith in God? And John Piper says, because of God's preservation. You didn't think it was all because of you, did you? But beyond the immediate future, what about the ultimate future? God will so arrange it that after a lifetime of faithful devotion to Jesus, he will cause us to stand in his presence without fault. Really? Without fault? Yes. And, he says, with joy. Verse 24. He will do this for us. He is able to do this for us. And for this marvelous grace of protection and preservation, we say, praise God. So we should savor it. That's consideration one. Now, consideration two. Consider who God is. Verse 25. From the ability of God, Jude now moves on to God's praiseworthy titles, which bear witness to his uniqueness. He is, it says... The only God. Do you see that in verse 25? The only God. And it goes on to say he is our Savior. These are his credentials to prove that he is truly a -a one-of-a-kind Savior. We've all seen business cards. And sometimes after the individual's name, names, there are little letters. Uh, Maybe talking about the certification or the degrees or something about the training that they've had. These cards display the their, the individual's credentials, and these credentials point to their competence. Well, that's what these are. He, de- he declares that he is the only God, and he is our Savior. Who but God can say that he alone is God? Who but God can say that he is a delivery specialist par excellence? And there's more. Not only does he have titles, but He possesses qualities that make him the epitome of worship. 
To him, Jude says, belongs first glory, a magnificent reputation, and majesty, over, he is overwhelmingly awesome, and thirdly, power, he possesses unrivaled strength, and fourthly, authority, he has cosmic sovereignty. In other words, there is no one like our God who stands head and shoulders over everything and everyone. Praise God. Consideration three. Again, verse 25. Jude says, consider his agent. In verse 25, we have the phrase, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is interesting. When we want to praise God, we don't simply waltz into his presence. We are brought into his presence. If you were ever given the privilege of an audience with Queen Elizabeth and you went to Buckingham Palace, I can assure you that you would not simply walk in through the gates, through the doors, and into her uh, uh, room, wherever you're meeting with her, you wouldn't simply walk in there. You would be directed. You would be brought there. And the one who brings us into the presence of God is none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He can do that. Praise God. Consideration four. Jude says, consider the permanency of this. Verse 25, the permanency of what? Of God's praiseworthiness. We've been saying that this doxology centers on the praiseworthiness of God. Another feature of his praiseworthiness is that it has always belonged to him. It belonged to him in the past. Notice what it says, before all ages. It belongs to him in the present. It says now and it will belong to him in the future. It says, and forevermore. In other words, praising God is always fashionable. It's always in season. It's always in vogue. That's because he's God. He is eternally praiseworthy. Praise God. And finally, consideration five. Consider your response. Again, verse 25. This is the audience response portion of the doxology. Now that we've heard the ringing endorsement of God that's been offered, God is praiseworthy, it is the audience's turn. It's our turn to speak. It's our turn to respond. What do we say to this? Do we agree? Will we affirm the same? Amen. 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 Amen is a term of agreement, surely, for sure. Considering God is able to rescue us and that he is like none other and that Jesus Christ is his right-hand man and that he is eternally worthy of our devotion, does it not make sense that we would take a knee every day for God? Have you taken the knee for God? Have you done it today? Let's take a moment right now to give thanks to the one who makes it possible for us to stand in his presence without fault. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Holy, holy is he Sing a new song it's all heaven's mercy see holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was in his knees to come with all creation i sing praise to the king of I will adore you. Clothed in 
rainbows of living color, flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to
with shout of acclamation and take me home with joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to how great thou art, 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 how great thou art. We have a few questions for you to ponder over this week. Our meditation today has focused on God's praiseworthiness. First, I'd like you to think of a time when you witnessed excellence, something remarkably impressive. What effect did it have on you? Secondly, 
Can you name three things about God in this doxology that most impress you about him? And thirdly, take a few minutes, a few moments, to declare the praiseworthiness of God. Well, our benediction today pretty much has to be from the book of Jude, verses 24 and 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time.